Many people ask me, why stem cells and umbilical cord blood for autism? First of all, there's very limited therapies for autism. You have nutritional therapy, you have behavioral therapy, and you have some pharmacologic therapy. But we found out in the last few years is that almost all these kids with autism have neuroinflammation. They have inflammatory processes in their brain. And we know from other experiments that umbilical cord blood in the stem cells inside of it can turn off this neuroinflammation. So now we have a bullet that we can actually give somebody that can target neuroinflammation and start helping these brains act more normally. What is a stem cell? People don't even know what a stem cell is. A stem cell, by definition, has asymmetric reproduction. You know, if you look at a muscle cell and it divides, you get two muscle cells. One heart cell, you get two cardiac cells. A brain cell can become another brain cell. So when cells divide, they only become what they already are. However, a stem cell doesn't do that. A stem cell can say, oh, we need to make a muscle cell. So it divides and it makes a muscle cell, but also makes another stem cell. You know, maybe it needs a cartilage cell. It can make a cartilage cell in another stem cell. So there are certain stem cells that can make gut. There are certain stem cells that make blood vessels and heart. And that's how they're kind of divided. As you go through life, every cell has its own kind of eventual mortality. It's got a defined lifespan. So after your muscle cell has been around a few years and it starts to go away, there's a stem cell right there to make another muscle cell. So it just keeps on going until eventually you start to run out of stem cells. And unfortunately, you run out of stem cells pretty quickly. After you're through uh, your teens, you've lost about 90% of your stem cells. Mid-30s, 95%. You know, mid-50s, 98.5%. Up until you're 80, and then you've lost 99.9%. Which is why as you age, you lose muscle mass, you lose organ mass, uh, you get more feeble, and eventually you get into that, that cycle and, and death because you cannot keep your body functioning without stem cells. So many people ask, why umbilical cord blood in the resultant stem cells for autism? First of all, there's very few treatments for autism. You have behavioral therapy, you have nutritional therapy, and you have pharmacologic therapy. But there was nothing really that targeted the basic physiologic problem with autism. An autopsy study from the NIH demonstrated that all these kids with autism had neuroinflammation. So once we knew there was a problem in the brain with neuroinflammation, we could start trying to find things that would target the neuroinflammation. And as it turns out, umbilical cord blood and the resulting stem cells inside of it have been shown to target neuroinflammation. And not only turn off neuroinflammation, but to turn on neurorestoration. So what evidence is there that that happens? The landmark study would have been the Duke study of 2019, where they took 25 kids with autism, gave them their own umbilical cord blood, at 60 to 65 percent got significantly better. These were objective studies. They looked at their MRI both before and after the stem cells and it became more normal. There were more connections in the speech center. They looked at their uh, brain waves, their EEGs. They became more normal after a single dose of, of bilical cord blood. And I think even more importantly, it's been shown to be very safe. There's 80 primary diseases now that the primary treatment is umbilical cord blood in the resultant stem cell. So many people ask, how does my child receive this umbilical cord blood in the stem cells? Well, it's really just a simple IV. You know, it's a little more complex than that because these cells are actually living cells. It's truly a transplant. The cells get delivered on dry ice, usually the day before. We have a freezer that holds them at minus 80 degrees. We get the IV started, and then once the IV started, we usually give a little Benadryl because of all the potential side effects, one of them is a little bit of a rash. I really haven't seen it, but we pre-treat with Benadryl anyway. These cells are very safe. They're sourced from live births in the United States, healthy babies, healthy mothers. They actually do blood work on the mother, the histories of the fathers are checked, and the blood work on the child, plus a lot of sterility cultures are taken.
to make sure these are safe cells that have uh, passed through the uh, rigors of the FDA. Many people ask, what can I expect when my child gets umbilical cord blood and stem cells for autism? We know from uh, multiple studies that not every child benefits. It's unclear why, but we know anywhere from 50 to 70 percent, so remarkable gains. In the United States today, a phase one study is, is this stuff safe? A phase two study is, does it work? A phase three study is dosage and administration. In a phase four study, is, is this better than anything we have? So a phase one study has been completed, so we know it's safe. And currently, uh, researchers at Duke and throughout the world actually are working on the phase two studies. But currently, only single doses have been given. Uh, like I said before, not everybody benefits. In fact, there's one big study, which is more of a negative study from Duke, where in one of their phase two studies, the umbilical cord blood showed no benefit. But when they broke down and looked at the data, they had an abnormally high number of kids with intellectual disabilities. And those kids as a group did not benefit as much as those kids with IQs of 70 and above. I've had many parents say they see a change within a week. I've had kids that have been trying to get potty trained anywhere from four years to eight years, and within a week of getting the stem cells, they're, they're potty trained. Kids that didn't interact with their siblings within two or three weeks are interacting with their siblings. But especially kids that get measured because they're in some type of behavioral therapy, we start to see benefits anywhere from one week as will be the earliest to about two months is the latest. The question comes up, if my child shows you know, promising you know, results, how often or when's the next uh, injection of stem cells? And I think the only really data we have is from the Duke study of, of 2019, where they tested these kids every month, and they showed these kids continued to make gains up to about six months, and then they plateaued. Uh, the interesting thing is they never came back down, so they got to a new level and, and held there. So depending on how you feel, if you want to treat it, uh, you know, from that data, you would probably give stem cells every six months because you would have a rise, then you would go again and then again. Um, however, some people say we should treat it like a drug because when you take an antibiotic, you don't wait for the level to drop down to zero. As soon as it starts to, to drop down, you, you give another dose. So I think anywhere from three to six months makes the most sense. Many people ask, you know, what's the difference between receiving treatment here in the United States versus going to Mexico or Panama or other countries? There's a big difference, and that's because in the United States, the FDA says you can't induce these stem cells to start regenerating outside of the body and then give expanded or cloned cells up into a person. And that's because there's a, a potential or theoretical risk is if you give cells some type of treatment to make them divide, that there might be some type of malignant transformation, and then you'll be putting malignant cells inside, you know, somebody else's body. So in the United States, we can only take, you know, whole umbilical cord blood or umbilical cord tissue, and then transfuse it uh, untouched. Whereas in uh, Mexico or in Panama, they can take that umbilical cord blood they can extract the mesenchymal stem cell, and they think the mesenchymal stem cell is the most important stem cell for uh, neural restoration. Expand it up, divide it 100,000 to a million times, and then put a lot more into your child's body. And that sounds good, and it may be good, because the studies have never been done looking at expanded cells versus non-expanded cells. But the way these cells work is once they get into your body, they have the ability to read these inflammatory signals in the body and home in, you know, kind of the heat-seeking missile to the area's inflammation, whether it's the brain, the gut, or, or some other areas. I do believe that the mesenchymal stem cell is one component of umbilical cord blood, and I do believe that might be doing the heavy lifting when it comes to autism. However, there, it's like chicken soup for healing, and kids with autism have been shown to have gut problems, 
they have problems with something called hunter killer cells, and a lot of other peripheral immune issues as opposed to central immune issues, which is in the brain. And that umbilical cord blood has hunter killer cells, T regulatory cells, it'll add hematopoietic stem cells, all of which have been shown to be beneficial, which you might miss if all you're getting are mesenchymal stem cells. What else can we do with stem cells? There's hematopoietic stem cells, which help the blood system and the immune system. There's mesenchymal stem cells, which help bone, cartilage, uh, nerve, uh, tendon, and ligaments. There's the endothelial uh, stem cells, which help uh, blood vessel and heart. There's endothelial stem cells, which help the gut. And there's something called the undifferentiated somatic stem cell. And they're not even quite sure what that does, but they think it really helps nervous tissue. And so as we age, our cells start to die off and we start to lose stem cells. So as an anti-aging program, you could actually get umbilical cord blood. Uh, and there's plenty of studies now that show that umbilical cord blood can help in autoimmune disease. It can help in osteoarthritis. We just recently had a patient who was 94 years old and he came in because his golf game wasn't what it used to be. He couldn't twist on his knees. His orthopedic surgeons wanted to do knee replacements on him and then he felt he wouldn't be able to heal that. So he got some umbilical cord blood, not only intravenously for his body in general, but also injection in his knees to help with the inflammation and help regrow cartilage. And he's doing very well. In the current literature, stem cells have been shown to help rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, uh, an autoimmune disease called Shrogan's disease, diabetes type one, general gut health, body mass, uh, when men age, between the ages of 60 and 80, they lose 50% of their muscle mass. And that's because the, the stem cell that's located in the muscle, something called a satellite cell, starts to age out and they go away. And so you can help replenish that. 